Jesus, one of the reasons why he came is to get this earth back into the hands of its rightful ownership, which is God. Praise God. Amen. Which in turn is man, because he created this that, thing you, for you, the you, man. I know my God has made the way for me. I know my God has made the way for me. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory. Join Kenneth Copeland and Bill Winston today as they teach us how to take ownership over the things God has given us. Seek God for His plan and take your place in Him. Now here's Kenneth. Hello, everybody. This is the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Let's have a word of prayer. We'll get right into today's Bible lesson. Father, we thank You. We give You praise and thanksgiving, sir. Ho, ho, ho. You have... Oh. We praise you and we worship you, sir. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my, my. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're so good to us. And we, we inquire of you for revelation from heaven. We inquire of you for words to speak, words that are not our own, because it's the Father that dwelleth within us. You do the works. And we praise you for it and thank you for it today on this broadcast. In Jesus' name, amen. Brother Bill, this has just been rich. Sir. This is powerful, I'm telling my, you. My, 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 my. Get us back in here quick. All right. <laughs> well, let's start at Psalm chapter 115. Yes, sir. And look at verse 16. He says, The heavens are the heavens of the Lord's, but the earth has he given to the children of men. Hmm. Now, we want to really get into that verse and kind of see uh, how, how does that, what, what does that really mean to us? Because I think there's been uh, sometimes, uh, not something intentional, but uh, kind of a misunderstanding of what, who we are in this earth and what we have as children of God, as, as, as sons of God. And so we need to... We and his need to, intention for doing it. And his intention yeah. Yeah, for doing it. it. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if we look at this, let's go over, because we left off at this whole idea of Hebrews chapter 1. Now, in Hebrews chapter 1, we saw here, and you mentioned it on, on yesterday, that he said in verse 1, God who at sundry times and diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Now, he made the worlds, and he's been appointed heir of all things. That's, that's nothing left out. Mm. Mm. So an heir mm -hmm. is one who has inherited something. So Jesus, being raised, is now heir of everything, that there is, I'm talking about in any dimension here, we're talking about he's an heir. And I looked that same scripture up in the Charles B. William trans, tra, Williams translation, and it says this, Jesus is a lawful owner of everything. Glory to God. Wow. He is everything. Oh, man. Now, I, I looked up own because it, it, sometimes, folk, people, you know, we got to go to a simple definition. What do you mean by own? And I looked it up in the Webster 1828 Dictionary. That's the one that's got the scriptures beside the words. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it says own means to have legal or rightful title to. That's what it says. It says to have legal or rightful title title to. That, that means to own. Well, if that be the case, and you've got to have title, legal, <clears throat> what about people who have a car, but making payments, or have a house making payments? And, 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 and I'm, I'm not focusing in on that. I'm focusing in on the fact that Somehow in the system, we say, I own my own house. And that's fine to say that. 
but does, does agree with the definition that we got here out of something that he's saying, wait, wait a minute now. It says to have legal or rightful title to. I just want to make sure. Now, I'm strictly dealing in the natural right now. Yeah. Amen. All right. So, I have ownership to it. Because when that mortgage crisis hit in 2008 and so forth, a lot of people found out they didn't own it. Oh, yeah. It went yeah. back to companies and banks and so forth and so on. He foreclosed on it. They didn't own it. Well, how many payments had you made? A bunch. And he took it? Yeah. Why? Because they had title to it. They had the ownership. And it went back to them. Yes. And I'm saying that Jesus, one of the reasons why he came is to get this earth back into the hands of its rightful ownership. Which is God. Praise God. Amen. Which in turn is man because he created this that, thing you, for the you, man. You, you got to see that, see. And he gave it to the man. It's the man that dumped it. it. <laughs> it's I'm telling you. And Jesus, well, we, you and I were talking about this earlier. Yeah. Um, when when uh, Satan stood up there in front of Jesus and, and said, uh, I showed him all the yep. kingdoms yep. of the world. Of the world. And all the glory there and all the properties, Luke assets, chapter everything. Four. Yeah, mm -hmm. Luke 4. Mm -hmm. And he said, bow down before me and I'll give them to you. For they are mine. They've been given to me. They I have been this. given to me. Yep. And I give them to whomsoever I will. All that change, Bill. <sighs> yeah, but the scripture says he's the God of this world. No, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. The world system. The world system. Not the, you can't use world and planet interchangeably when it comes to scripture. Yeah. They, there are certain things he's talking about going to all the world and preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. He's talking about the Babylonian system that, of commerce that's got people trapped in it. Mm -hmm. Now, when Jesus was raised from the dead, the scripture said he spoiled principalities and powers, making an open show of them, openly. Show it. He stripped. The spoil means to strip. Exactly you remember, right. to the victor goes the spoil. That's exactly that's right. what we're talking about that's right what, now. That, and Satan that, don't own anything. anything. See, that's Colossians chapter 2, if they're making reference, and verse uh, 14. And it says, um, no, in verse 15, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing, triumphing over, them. over them. Now, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Triumphing over them in it. Thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph. What? In his triumph. See, now, now let's, let's just go from there and go over to Romans chapter 8, all right, from Hebrews and go over to Romans chapter 8. Then in Romans chapter 8, he brings out another... Now, I'm just going by the Scriptures now. This is just what the Scriptures oh, yeah. say. He said in verse 16, the Spirit... Uh, itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Watch this. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. So we're just over here. He just said he is a lawful He's owner heir of everything. Of a lawful and, owner of all everything. things. And it says here that he, we are joint heirs with Christ. That in fact, if what he inherited, did not mean that we get some of that too. Absolutely. Now I'm 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 just reading the scriptures here. Now, if that be the case, why isn't it in the hands of these people of God out here? And I'm saying this, that this whole ownership mentality yes. has really got to take hold in the body of Christ. Because God has some things for us out here that only through that mentality. Can the people, and excuse my, the, the word that I'm going to use here, get outraged enough to see that that doesn't belong to that person, that it belongs in the body of Christ, that this thing can be transferred? Yeah. Bill, there's, mm. uh, there is a shift in, in um, 
concept and attitude between the time Jesus was on the earth and the time he was resurrected and seated at the right hand of God, because we've now been raised up with him and seated uh, in it, raised up with him in heavenly places. We're seated on the throne of grace. Now, he talked about being stewards yes, see. of God. Now you can't, you can't take the new born child of God, joint heir with Christ, and make him a servant um, steward. It's not he when you They're two different things. When you brought out this thing that we are owners with stewardship responsibility, that said it all. That's a different steward than a servant. Here in Galatians chapter four. Oh, that's so good. In Galatians chapter four, he speaks about something. He says, now I say that the heir, as long as he's a child, differs nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. Now, the Amplified even talks about that that he being, if, if, if his mentality, even though he owns everything, if he has the wrong mentality, that this uh, mentality of a slave, then what he owns can't be handled by him because mm -hmm. he, he doesn't have the mentality to handle it. You can't put a 30-year-old head on a 12-year-old child. Go. There you go. Ah, but you goodness. need to be growing up. And you don't need to have a 12-year-old head on a 30-year-old child. Now, this is what I said. I put in my notes. There's an inheritance for you that cannot be delivered to you beyond your level of growth. Mm-hmm. That's right. Uh, Bill, John, and I were hunting one time. We were... Uh, I, I, when, when he was just a little boy, the Lord taught me to include him in everything. And uh, I, I, bought him, I, bought, I bought him a shotgun when he was old enough, and I, and I bought me one just like it. And I mean, we just, uh, we came up together, and we're still very, very close friends. We're not, we're not just father and son. We are brothers in Christ Jesus, and we're very close. Anyway, he is a little old boy. But now, from Bill, from the time he was just a little boy, if he could see it, he could hit it. He's just a natural shot, and he literally saved my life in the woods one time. We were, we were squirrel hunting, and I was looking up in the tree. He hollered, Daddy, freeze! I just stopped my foot still up in the air. I'm just standing there. Pow! Now, Bill, he's not but about 13, 12 maybe, 13. Pow! I looked down, he shot the head off of a cotton mouth water mox and pow, man. And, and right, to, <laughs> but that's just the way he was. Now, we out there hunting around, all of a sudden he throws that shotgun to his shoulder. I said, whoa, whoa, what, what are you going to do? <laughs> he wasn't about seven, eight years old. Well, there was a, a feeder shed out there, which is just a little a little building that cover up uh, feed and, and, and uh, Gloria's granddad was on his place. And, and they'd put feed in there and he'd cover it up and protect uh, what it was feeding off of. And there's a great big old transler on the side of the wall, that thing. I mean, that thing, boy, he'd feel your hand. Boy, John had just laid down on it. He could shoot just as good as I can. He, he, had, he had the same skills, Goodness. and in some cases, better than I. But he didn't know that if he shot that big spider, he's going to blow a hole in the building. Mm -hmm. Now, I knew that. How come I knew it and he didn't? 
See, See I, I, I knew how to manage this. That is my job to teach him. I said, boy, don't shoot that. You shoot a hole in that building. Oh, oh. But see, he never, now, he, if he had done it, then he got this big hole in the building. Now he's in trouble. Well, that's the way Christian people have been doing. Is there all the time. We've owned this all the time. Well, that's what he told the prodigal son's brother, didn't he? Didn't he? Didn't that's a, didn't listen, he that is that. an outstanding example Did of it, isn't it? <laughs> he told him, he said in verse 31 of Luke chapter 15, and he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. You, you, this, this, this is yours. You, the other brother, the younger brother, tried to come back and act like a servant. He, he said, well, I'm going to tell Father, I've sinned against heaven before you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Just make me as one of your hired servants. Well, he wasn't a servant. No, he, he wasn't. Was and the daddy wasn't looking for servants. He sure wasn't, was he? He, he had servants. Many servants. Yeah. And you look at God. Yeah. He has angels as servants. My goodness. He's not mm. looking for servants. Now, we serve him. Yes, Don't indeed. misunderstand me. Mm. We are. And, and, and we... we Fill, fulfill roles as servants, but we're in this together. We are joint heirs. We're on assignment. Ah, uh, we own things. We're not earning, earning things. They're already ours. We just do what he says, say what he says, say. He does the work, and we just continually bless and progress. And This uh, person who's a friend of mine lives in another country. And uh, as a matter of fact, I preach this over in England. And after I got done preaching, the pastor and I was we all downstairs fellowshipping and eating. And he said, you know, you describe my country. And this particular person was from, from some part of Africa. But the other person I'm talking about is from some part of India. The guy from India said, you know, we went out on our land one time and we went out there. There was somebody having it. They were in a, occupying the house, having a party and so forth. I said, man. He said, I said, what did you do? He said, I went and told him. I said, listen, this is our property. You got to get off this. this. This is not. He said, this is our property. And he said, no. I, I, he said, I have proof that this is my property. This is people who are poaching now, who is who, squatters. He showed him a title. They had paid somebody through that Babylonian system to manufacture a counterfeit title to that land that that man was on and claiming it was his. Now, I'm, I'm saying that the whole system of Satan is a counterfeit. The yeah. whole system. Had, had they filed that claim? Was it in the courthouse? See, or? they had, whatever they had done, that he took three years of legal wrangling, you know, going through lawyers and everything to get that land back to verify the fact that that well, was Well, now, that's land. the way the devil will do you. Absolutely. And, and he'll show you proof that it's his. Uh, well, he's a liar. He don't own anything. <laughs> Whatever he's got, he stole well, it. He stole it. Well, let's go to <laughs> Hebrews chapter 11. Let's Glory to God. 11. And the other pastor, when I preached that in England, he said, you know what? <clears throat> he said, you described some of that that's going on in our country. He said, they, they are counterfeit in titles. They're doing so forth and so forth. See, that's that system. I mean, uh, thank God that in this country we have that system pretty well intact, but there are countries that that, that judicial system is under attack by the enemy. Yeah. And, and, yeah, and yeah. He, he ain't got titles running all over the place. The um, same piece of land. I got something to say here. Mm, mm, mm. Your children don't belong to Satan. My goodness, praise God. Mm. Now listen to him. And you tell him so. And you get in the scripture and you find your promises about your household and about your children and you tell him right now, Satan, those are not, those don't belong to you. They're not yours. I don't care if you're leading them around and they're following you and acting like you. They don't belong to you. They belong to me. And if they belong to me, they belong to God. You stop it and take your hands off my family right now. Don't put up with that any longer. They belong to you. Lord. Amen. Praise God, I'm Glory telling you, God. that was for somebody. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. came out of spirit. 
Now look at, look at, look at uh, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Oh, yes. The evidence of things not seen. Now in the Amplified translation, he says faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for being proof of the things we do not see and the conviction of their reality. Faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the center. Now, now let me just hit that, Brother Cole. Let's hit that. Oh, and that girl. Truth is the highest level of reality. So if I want to know the truth, I've got to go up in Jesus because oh, yes. he is truth. And I discovered truth. His word is forever settled in heaven. He's telling you right here that you're joined in with Jesus, that th what Jesus got, you got. That's the truth. It may not look like that in this earth, but make it look like that. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This stuff is supposed to be transferred into your hands. Yes, sir. And that truth will make you free. That truth will make It'll you free. It'll make you free from that Babylonian. Yes, system. sir. You're not, you don't have to be in debt. My no. goodness. You don't need to be in debt. My goodness. Now, where prayer comes in is the petition prayer can be used to make the transfer. That's where you make it is. That's the way you step over. Uh, you said something before we, I want, and, and, mm. and I want mm. you to repeat yeah, it. Yeah. Um, before we started the, the broadcast, you were talking about, well, you just mentioned it mm -hmm, then. Mm -hmm. Uh, making the transfer yeah. from the realm of the, of the spirit by faith, by faith, bringing it into this natural physical yes. realm. Mm -hmm. Religion wants to put it off till you get to heaven. We're not talking about heavenly things. We're talking about earthly things, right things here. in the earth. Right here. We're out of time, so we'll have to start here tomorrow. But let, let, let's begin here, as, as, if the Lord would transfer this. Thing. How you transfer assets, yes. uh, goods, yeah. Yeah. influence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Apostle Paul said. I worked harder than any of them, yet not me, but the grace of God with me. That's influence. That's favor. It's strong influence. But how do you do it? How do you transfer it? Brother Bill and I will be back in just a moment. Have you ever prayed and wondered if God heard you? How do you take hold of his promises and make them a reality in your life? The Unlimited Potential Package, two teaching series by Bill Winston, The Power of Prayer and Praise, and Taking Ownership, Volume 2, will help you break through and get results. Build a solid foundation of prayer in your life. Learn how faith makes prayer work. Find out why love is the key to receiving from God. Discover how to seek God for answers and pray effectively. Believe you receive as you declare God's word with authority. Reach new levels of faith and take the next step towards living in your God-given privileges. Assume your rightful place in God and realize your unlimited kingdom potential. Be kingdom-minded, take ownership, and bring heaven to earth. Get results in your prayer life that'll change your world. Order the Unlimited Potential Package today for only $34.99 and enjoy a savings of 28%. Go to kcm.org slash TV special, call our toll-free number, or write to us today. This package contains two teaching series by Bill Winston that will open your understanding of God's Word. Discover how praise will draw you into the very throne room of God. For an additional 10% off, order the Unlimited Potential Package online. Now you can, you can see from what's been going on here 
that if you particularly if you watched all last week and you've been watching all this week, because and if you didn't get it last week, get KCM.org and get it. Now, the these two uh, CD series by Brother Bill, the power of parent prayer and praise and taking ownership. This is what we're talking about this week. Now, there have been things that have come out on the broadcast last week and this that he and I neither one even knew until God revealed as we was in here. So, so you need, you need the, whole, the whole package, see? But that's the reason these things are so important. If you get in here and you begin to, you be, you begin to, to believe God, the same thing will happen to you. There'll be things just come out of your spirit. Say, yeah, revelation is there for you. Father, we pray. We open the, 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 the faith and the word to our, to our partners all over this radio and television audience all over the world. For it is given unto them to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. The Believer's Voice of Victor broadcast celebrates its 35 years this year. May the 2nd, 1979 was the first Sunday broadcast. Now, the Believer's Voice of Victory now airs on over a thousand TV stations worldwide, about 1,100 of them at, at the time of this taping. Now, today you can watch TV on a phone, on a tablet, on a computer, mm. all different kinds of ways. Because God said all those years ago, I want you to preach the gospel on every available voice. So all we did was obey. We didn't try to figure out, what, we just did it. And we did it exactly the way we've been talking about right here on this program. This is the way to, I mean, it was a prayer success. That's what did it. And we're still doing it the same way. My, my, my. Well, praise God. Amen. This is Kenneth and Bill. We'll see you again tomorrow. Remember, Jesus is Lord. Build your faith and be transformed by the Word of God. The Believer's Voice of Victory is available on DVD or CD at kcm.org. Continue your studies with this week's product offer. Order your copy today and let these Word-based teachings help you live in victory. Receive God's grace abounding toward you and live in the blessing. Come to a Kenneth Copeland Ministries event. Living Victory Orlando Faith Encounter, Champions Gate, Florida, April 18th through 19th with Kenneth Copeland and Dr. Stephen and Kelly Swisher. Living Victory Las Vegas Faith Encounter, Henderson, Nevada, May 30th through 31st with Kenneth Copeland and Dr. Stephen and Kelly Swisher. The 2014 Peru Victory Campaign, Kenneth Copeland will be in Lima, Peru, June 6th through the 7th at the Eduardo Diwas Coliseum.